So now that we know all the factoring techniques and we've seen quite a few examples from college algebra, we need to see some examples that we might see during a calculus class. But before I get to those examples, let's review the first factoring technique because that's the technique that we're going to be using here. This is the common factor technique and it's the easiest one. We just look to see what terms have something in common. I've included the two examples that were from my common factor technique video and just to review some key things in these examples to help us with our calculus examples. So in example one, notice I have two terms separated by the plus signs. So when I factored out my common factor of three, I am left with two terms. Okay. Also, when I did it in my second example, I have three terms. And when I factored out my common factor, I'm left with three terms. Okay, so let's see this in my first calculus example. Now it's quite a bit bigger than our college algebra examples, but the thing is, is to not get overwhelmed by it. We just wanna see how many terms we have in the first place. And remember, terms are those pieces separated by the plus signs. Now I have lots of plus and minus signs here, but I really only care about one plus sign, the big plus sign in the middle, because that separates my two very large terms. So I wanna see what I have in common between these two terms. So I have one term up here, and I have a second term back here. So I wanna see what's in common between these two terms. Okay. Most people notice the parentheses first. They notice, well, I have a 3x plus 1 in common between both of those terms, and I have a 2x minus 1 in common between both of those terms. And that is an excellent start, but we can actually go quite a bit farther than that. With the 3x plus 1, notice I have four of them here, and I have three of them there. Well, I can take out the most, that both of these terms have. So since my second term only has three of them in common, I can only take out three of these three x plus ones. Okay. Same thing with the two x minus ones. I have four in my first piece and five in my second piece. So I can take out the smallest amount, which is four. Now, that's a great step into figuring out our full common factor, but I can actually take out even more than that. If we look at our numbers, our coefficients in front, we notice that even those have something in common. So I can take out my common factor between 10 and 12, which is a 2. So this guy here up front, that is my common factor between our whole first example. So since I've taken this out, now I have to figure out what I have left with it. So I'm going to do brackets here instead of parentheses like normal, and that's because we already have parentheses in this problem. If we go back to our previous examples, notice we go from a full polynomial to parentheses. That's what we're doing here, but we're using brackets instead of parentheses. Okay. And then to get from our first step to our second step, basically we take each term and we divide it by our common factor. So 3x squared divided by 3 leaves me with x squared, and 9 divided by 3 leaves me with 3. So that's the same thing that we're going to do here in my calculus example. My first term is this here and I'm going to divide it by my common factor, my greatest common factor there. So I'm gonna do it piece by piece. And then when I get that done, I have to do the same thing over here, my second term and divide it by my common factor. So when I'm done, I'm going to have left two terms. And this is where most people get confused as to what we're actually dividing out. So remember, since I started out with two terms up in the original polynomial, I should be left with two terms down here after I've factored out my common factor. So I'm going to do it piece by piece, and maybe let me highlight it so you can see the color coordination. I have this blue thing here. If I divide it by my yellow greatest common factor, I'm going to be left with the blue piece there. And let's go ahead and do that. So 
10 divided by 2 gives me a 5. I have my parentheses of 3x plus 1 to the 4th, and I took out 3x plus 1 to the 3rd. So that means I have one set of those parentheses left over. So that gives me 3x plus 1. And in my second set of parentheses, I had 2x minus 1 to the 4th, and I took out 2x minus 1 to the 4th. So I've taken out all of it, so technically I'm left with one of those things left over. Now, I'm not going to normally put that there, but I'm just showing you since I divided it all out, I'm left with a one. Okay, let's do this exact same thing here with my second term. So here's my second term. I'm going to divide it by my yellow greatest common factor, and I'm going to be left with it here. So first, 12 divided by 2 gives me 6. 2x minus 1 to the 5th divided by 2x minus 1 to the 4th. I have left one of those parentheses because 5 minus 4 is 1, so 2x minus 1 to the 1st. But again, I'm not going to write that first power. And in my second set of parentheses, 3x plus 1 cubed, and I took out all of 3x plus 1 cubed. So technically, I'm left with 1 left over, but most of the time we don't write that 1. So let get, let's get rid of all of this extra unnecessary stuff here. So now that I've factored out and I've divided out what I have left, I can figure out how to continue to simplify this part here. With my greatest common factor, this 2, 3x plus 1 to the third times 2x minus 1 to the fourth, I will never do anything with it, but I can typically, almost always, simplify the leftovers. So let me just rewrite this so you can see it in a better fashion, and you can see how we can simplify it. So to simplify this, I'm just going to take my 5 and distribute it through that set of parentheses, and my 6 to distribute it through that set of parentheses. So again, just copying down my common factor so I don't forget to include it in my final answer. And here distributing these pieces. 5 times 3x gives me 15x, plus 5 times 1 gives me 5. 6 times 2x gives me 12x, and 6 times negative 1 gives me negative 6. So all I have to do is combine like terms here, and that's going to give me my most simplified answer. So copying down my common factor one more time. And now I can keep this in brackets if I want, but since I'm not holding parentheses on the inside anymore, I don't really need the brackets, so I'm going to switch it to parentheses and combine like terms. So 15x plus 12x gives me a 27x, and 5 minus 6 gives me a negative 1. So I have factored out my common factor in this very large problem, and you can see it simplifies to something quite nicely. So that's my first example of these calculus problems. Let me show you one more, which is very similar, but it has a more difficulty level in it, so that's why I want to show you another example of this. Again, we're going to factor it using common factor, so I want to pick out how many terms I have. Well, the separating piece is this minus sign here, so I have a term up here, and I have a second term back here. So I just have to figure out what's in common between these two terms. And the only thing that we have in common is the set of parentheses of x minus 1. But the tricky part in this problem is how many of them do I factor out? Do I factor out the negative 2 exponent here or the negative 3 exponent that I have there or something else? What's well, going to follow the same method that we used in my last example and any other common factor example. We always factor out the smallest amount. So notice with my 3x plus 1s, I had 4 and 3. So I took out my smallest amount of 3. 
And notice with my 2x minus 1s, I had 4 and 5, so I took out my smallest amount of 4. So I'm going to take out my smallest amount, remembering that when I have negatives, it's actually the larger number. So I'm actually going to factor out negative 3 of these. So that's the only thing I have in common. So let's figure out what I have left. And I'm going to put two blanks here to help me fill in what I have past this point. Okay, let's start with my second piece. It actually is going to be a little bit easier to figure out what we have left over. If I have this guy here, and all I took out was x minus 1 to the negative third, that basically cancels out that piece there. So I'm left with my 2 times 3x minus 2. In my first piece, I have this here. So I know for sure I have this extra 3 left over. But the question is, is how many of these x minus 1s? Well, let's go back to what we did in the previous example. If I had 4 and I took out 3, I just subtract them. 4 minus 3 leaves me with 1 over here. Same thing in my second part. I have 5 of the 2x minus 1s. I took out 4 of them, so I subtract them. That leaves me with 1 of them here. So the trick is I subtract them. So I take my starting exponent of negative 2. I subtract out my common factor. Now I subtract out my common factor, so I actually have a double negative there. So to simplify this, this gives me negative 2 plus 3, which tells me I have a positive 1 left over. And that's why I always take out the smallest amount. So I'm left with a positive exponent here. And 99% of the time, your exponent that you're going to be left with is 1. Okay. So, to simplify this, I copy down my common factor, and I distribute my numbers in front. And in my second piece, don't forget to distribute the negative and the 2. That leaves me with 3 times x, 3x. Three, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Negative 2 times 3x gives me a negative 6x. And negative 2 times negative 2 gives me a positive 4. So I simplify what I have in my brackets, and that gives me my final answer. Combining like terms, 3x minus 6x gives me a negative 3x, and negative 3 plus 4 gives me a positive 1. So I have factored out my common factor, and that gives me this answer here. The trick with this example is just remember when it's negatives, it's actually the largest number. Now, you're more than welcome to leave your answer like this, but I can actually simplify it a little bit farther. And it goes back to what does a negative exponent actually mean? Well, a negative exponent is like a bad attitude in my mind. And if somebody in my house has a bad attitude, I want to get as far away from them as possible. So that means I move them to the opposite floor, meaning I can move this x minus 1 to the opposite floor. He gets a happy attitude there, meaning a positive exponent. And my other piece, I can just leave where he is because he has a good attitude in that place. If you need review of this, I suggest you go back and review those videos. If not, then that should be clear that that is a different version of this final answer. So I've worked through a couple of examples that you might see later on in this calculus class. And hopefully when you see this show up again, you now know how to factor them completely.